Okay, let's get started. So I like to start off in a nice cobbler pose. It feels more symmetrical than legs crossed or this is just my preferred starting position, but you can start with your legs crossed, whatever feels comfortable for you. Oh, we're just gonna close our eyes, sit up nice and tall, extend through the neck, big extension. You wanna create a lot of space between your ears and your shoulders. Shoulders down. Let's just take a couple of breaths here. So you'll take a nice deep breath in through the nose and exhale through the mouth. And it's really important in yoga. One of the first things we learn is to warm up the spine. So we'll just start with some gentle rocking side to side. Lead with the base of your spine and sort of let the rest of your back follow. Nice fluid motion. You can get your shoulders into it. Make some exaggerated shoulder roll movements, rolling to the back. Sit up nice and tall. We're gonna take our left hand, put it centered behind our back. Right hand goes to the left knee. Deep breath in, exhale, twist. And go ahead and look over that left shoulder. Make sure you're still sitting up nice and tall. And you'll see as we go through some of these positions, I try to stay really conscious of my form and I try and correct myself. So I'm giving you guys the best form I can. Exhale back to center. But I want you guys, I'll emphasize how positions feel and I want you guys to really focus on making sure you're feeling a lot of those things I'm talking about instead of just looking really good while you do it. Deep breath in, exhale, we'll take our right hand behind, left hand to right knee, twist. But like I said, as we go through, you'll see me sort of correct and adjust. Because I'm not perfect. I don't do everything right the first time. And back to center. Let's go back for a little more swaying motion. Now let's focus on just rolling the shoulders. Roll them backwards. So bring them up to your ears, back down, forward, back up to your ears. Just do a little bit of that. If I'm not warmed up, I notice it in my shoulders first. Now let's bring it around to the front. So bring your shoulders up to your ears, to the front, down and back. music a little loud. I wonder if you guys can hear that. This is my first time with this mic pack. All right, let's bring our left ear to our left shoulder. As close as you can get it. Don't hike your shoulder up. You want to bring your ear to your shoulder. Right ear to right shoulder. Bring your chin to your chest. Back up. 
back. Not too far. You'll feel it pinch a little. So you just want to keep it just for a stretch, not so that it hurts. Nice and relaxing. All right, now let's come to a tabletop position. So that's all fours. And you want to make sure you've got your shoulder over your wrist and your hip over your knee. And a nice neutral spine. So what that means is you don't want to be sway back like an old horse. You just want to be oh, just nice and neutral. You can probably see my mic back. Give me a little hump back. All right, so we're going to take our eyes and we're going to gaze around to our left and see if we can see our left toes. You probably can't see them, but it's the thought that counts. Big stretch through the side body, through that right side. You can feel it through your ribs, through the right side of your neck. Back to center. Now I'll switch it over to the left, to the right side. So you'll feel that stretch through the left side of your body, through your left ribs, through here, through your neck here. See if you can see your right toes. And back to center. All right, so we're gonna bring our toes together. Keep our knees a little bit apart. Push back in child's pose. Sink back. And you can feel this stretch through your hips and then through the backs of your arms all through here. And just push down a little bit. You wanna get your heart as close to the mat as you can. You can even bring your forehead all the way down. And just really focus on stretching out those arms and opening those hips. All right, back up. I've got a runny nose today. All right, so we're gonna start with one of my favorite balance poses. I love this for any sort of beginner, anyone who really needs to work on building up their balance muscles. So we're gonna take our left hand, bring it up off the mat, extend it out and then take your right foot and extend it out and you can either keep it on the mat to balance if you really do need to work on building up your balance muscles or you can bring it up and create a nice long line through the body and just hold this for a couple more seconds five four, three, two, one. Bring it back down. Now we'll switch. So you'll shift your weight to your right knee. Move my ponytail. Extend our right hand out, left foot out. And you're really using your left hand and your right knee to balance. You'll feel a lot of weight on those. So let's hold this for another couple seconds. Three, two, one. Bring it back down. All right, let's try it one more time on each side. Left hand out, right foot extended. Press through the heel, press it towards the wall. If you're feeling real fancy, you can swing that hand up and see if you can grab your foot. Not only is this one of my favorite balance builders, but it's one of my favorite quad stretches. All right, so if you're extended or if you're holding onto your foot, we're gonna do this just another second and release back to the mat. 
All right, one more time on the right side. Right arm out, left foot extended. And you can either stay here or bring that hand back, reach for the foot, bring it up and stretch out. It's always easier to, easier to keep your gaze towards the mat here and keep the line from your neck through your spine as straight as possible. Just another second. And release. Ooh, back to the mat. Push back into child's pose, toes together, knees apart. Give your arms a break. Of it. All right, back up into the tabletop position. Maybe next time I'll put my hair in a bun. This is distracting. Okay, so again, we're going to do a leg extension out. So take that left leg, toes to the mat, extend it out. Now, point your toes to the outside of your mat and rest on the inside of your foot. Shift your weight to that right side, right hand, right knee. Make sure you're nice and straight, long line. Take your left hand and swoop it up towards the sky. And you might need to change the position of your right toes to help keep, keep yourself balanced. Let's follow our hand with our gaze. So we're gonna look up at our left hand. Stretch out, wiggle your fingers, nice active fingers. Deep breath in, breathe into the belly. And here you wanna make sure you keep your chest open, shoulders back. bring that left hand back down. Left leg back in. And we'll switch over to the right side. So extend that right foot out. Inside of the foot goes towards the end of the mat. Shift your weight over to your left. Left hand, left knee, right hand. Comes up. Follow your gaze up your right hand, up to the ceiling. Deep breath in. And again, keep that chest big and open. And if you bring your shoulder blades together, imagine kind of squeezing them together. Or if they're corseted, you could tighten the laces and bring them together. And that's gonna help you really focus on keeping an open chest. back to the mat. Back to the knees, shift back to child's pose. Oh, forehead to the mat. Give your arms a break. All right, back up onto all fours. So we're gonna step each foot out, left foot out, and come into a high plank. Right foot out. So here you wanna create a nice long line through the spine, don't drop the booty. Just keep it all sort of in line. And just like we did with our foot earlier, we're gonna roll the inside of our left foot to the mat, outside of the right foot to the mat. Bring your weight to your right hand. And we'll bring that left hand up. So this is a fully extended side plank. Before it was just a sort of modified side plank. And you'll feel this works different muscles. So you'll feel the inside of your, 
I don't know, rib muscles engaged a little bit more. You can bring your left hand back down. Come back to your knees. Shake it out. Now we'll walk them back out. Inside of the right foot comes to the mat, outside of the left foot. And then we'll shift our weight to our left side. Bring our right hand up. Always follow the gaze with the hand. Follow the hand with the gaze. We're good with the ceiling. Deep breath in. Bring the hand back to the mat. Back to the knees. <clears throat> back to child's pose. Woo. So at this point, your arms should feel a little burn. Feel a little burn. <sighs> okay. Arms out. Back to a tabletop position. Nice neutral spine. And at this point, we're going to tuck our toes. Tuck our toes under. Press through the mat. And we're going to start to lift our knees up off of the mat. And send our hips back into a downward dog position. So, if this is your first downward dog of the day, you'll probably need to pedal your legs a little bit. Alternate bringing each heel to the mat, straightening the legs. If you can't straighten both legs at once, that's okay. We'll get there. You can sway side to side a little bit. Just really feel it out. Get loose. Burr, burr, burr. But nice and slow. You don't want to get too crazy and jostle things around. All right. Then from here, we'll come back into the plank position. And we're going to slowly lower ourselves down. We're going to keep our elbows in tight to our rib cage. Slowly lower down. Flip your feet, top of the feet to the mat. Hands up towards the chest. And then we'll extend up into a cobra. Again, elbows in tight. Deep breath in. Look up at the ceiling. Stretch through the neck. Now we're going to tuck the toes. We're going to push back into a downward dog. And you'll probably need to walk your hands in a little. I just have hair everywhere. Always. All right. So let's take our right foot, step it forward between our hands. Bring our left knee to the mat. And slowly come up into a low position. I can feel all of my wires and small shifts. Get everything tucked in. Big arms, big arms extended up to the ceiling. Drop your shoulders down and you want to create lots of space between the ear and the shoulders. So your first inclination is probably like to reach up and swamp your ears with your shoulders, but you want to keep them down. Looking up. <sighs> Deep breath in. Deep breath out. And bring our hands back to the mat. Step that right foot back. Back into a plank position. Shift back into downward dog. Get yourself situated. A lot 
lot of people feel like this all needs to be a really graceful, fluid movement. And for a lot of people, it may be. I'm not a particularly graceful person, so I usually have to fidget around a little bit and find my footing, literally. All right, so let's step our left foot forward, up between the hands. Drop that right knee down, top of the foot down, knee over ankle, and reach up. Again, keep the shoulders dropped, hands to the ceiling. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Bring the hands back to the mat. Step your foot back and back into a plank position. Now we're going to take our right foot. Bring your knee about midway and extend that leg out so it's just about perpendicular to your body. Ooh. You should feel that stretch through your right glute and then back. Do it with the left foot. Left foot out. Stretch through the right glute, left glute, left hamstring. And bring it back. Drop the knees. Push on back into child's pose. This necklace is getting in the way. You know when it's just the right length and it just catches on your chin? Okay, child's pose. We've given our arms a pretty good workout. So, come back up into tabletop. We'll get into more standing stuff so we can give our armos a little break. All right, feet apart, toes tucked. We're gonna push back into a downward dog position. And we're gonna follow that up by stepping our feet forward and going into a forward fold. So, exhale. Up into downward dog, shift the hips back. Stretch it out, stretch, stretch. And then walk your feet forward. Some people jump, but I don't think that's safe for me. My whole mat will shift. All right. So just like with downward dog, you don't have to have your knees locked out here if that doesn't feel comfortable. You can keep a little bend, a little flex, and just straighten them out as much as you can, as much as feels comfortable. And you can either bring your hands to the mat or hold on to your legs and sort of hug yourself in. But the important thing to remember here is to keep your back as flat as possible. So we talked about lacing those shoulder blades together. That's what you want to focus on here. Squinching them together, pulling the chest open, and it'll really help you keep that flat back. <sighs> Breathe, hug it in, or drop it down, whatever your reach allows. And then we're gonna take a deep breath in and rise up just a little. Exhale a little deeper and just let your head hang 
keeping your back flat. And on our next inhale, we're going to rise up as slowly as we can. Deep breath in. Use your glutes, really engage those to help pull yourself up, slowly, slowly rising. Slow. We're going to keep the motion going with our arms. Stretch them up overhead. Big stretch. Hands together. Lace your fingers together. See, we almost got like a toy gun. Pew pew. And then I'll step this direction so you can see. We're going to bend the left. Again, keeping that chest open, shoulder blades laced together. You want to keep your weight as equally distributed on your feet as you can. And just bend and stretch through the shoulders, through the arms. Back to center. Deep breath in, exhale, let's go to the right side. And as you Lace those shoulders together and pull back. Keep the chest open. Back to center. Deep breath in. Exhale. Bring your hands down. And we'll keep the balancing muscle building going. So from here, you can bring your hands into a prayer position, thumbs against your sternum, nice and grounding. And you can either stay here with your feet about hip width apart, or you can start to shift your weight over to your left foot. You can Leave your right foot on the mat for balance if you need it. Or just use your toes. Or bring your foot to the inside of your calf. Or you can bring it all the way up to the inside of your thigh. But either calf or thigh, don't rest it on your knee because that'll put undue pressure on your knee. And I want to do yoga to preserve my body, strengthen it, not damage it. So to help with this, I usually pick something fixed in the distance to focus on. Um, as a teacher, you'll see people, the students are struggling a little maybe and they're wobbling. It's really hard to maintain your balance while you're watching other people, but if you find something like a bookshelf or an electrical outlet, it's going to help you steady yourself, help keep you in the zone. So you'll probably feel your calves doing a lot of work to help keep you stabilized and balanced. Maybe some work going on in the hamstrings, maybe in the left glute. But these are your balancing muscles. So we want to keep them strong. So, just like always, long neck, shoulders down. We'll take a couple more breaths here. And then you can slowly bring that right foot back to the mat. 
Shake it out. <sighs> find your footing, find your grounding. Start to shift that weight over to the right side. And again, you can put your toe on the mat to help keep you balanced. Bring that foot to the inside of your calf, or you can bring it all the way up to the inside of your thigh. Nice long spine, shoulders down, neck long. Ooh, a little wobblier on this side. You'll notice you've got more strength in one side than the other. It's easier to balance on one side than the other. You're probably more flexible on one side than the other. And that's okay. That is just the way our bodies are. And you can work on building more strength in your weaker side. But be gentle with yourself. And there will also be days where you can balance and days you can't. Don't come into the pract practice with expectations. You want to come in and be open and gracious with yourself. Because there are days I cannot balance. This morning I'm doing a little better, but it's a little wobbly. So as you find your footing here, literally, um, Relax, relax your knee, relax your calf. We'll stay here for just another minute. Not an actual minute, just for a couple more breaths. In case you were forgetting to breathe while you focused on this, don't forget to breathe. Just relax. Sometimes you just got to come out of the pose. So at this point, <coughs> you feel a fair amount of burn through those balancing muscles, through your glutes, through your hamstrings, through your quads, a little around your knees, and through your calf. <sighs> so let's bring that left foot back to the mat. Shake it out. Shake it out. Woo. Okay, let's get our weight distributed. We're gonna take a deep breath in and go back into that forward fold. So we'll take a deep breath in. Arms up, spread them out, and we're gonna exhale and dive down. Stretch it out. Stretch through those hamstrings. You can wiggle a little here. Stretch from one side to the other. Start to bend the knees and we're gonna come into a squatting position to eventually lower our booties down to the mat. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So after that, like I said, you've probably got a little burn going on out here. So we're gonna stretch stretch our glutes, stretch our hamstrings. And we'll do that. We're going to bring our right foot in. Go ahead and grab it. Bring it in as close to your body as you can. If this is it, if this is as far as you can bring it, if this is, that's fine. But the goal is to eventually get it to bring your foot to the pit of your elbow and hug that leg in. So you'll feel that stretch through your glute, especially. Thanks, oh, baby. Rocket side. You can keep your butt up for a minute, or you can relax. Like doesn't matter.
All right, let's release that leg back out. Bring your left foot in. And like I said, if you can't bring it all the way in, bring it as far as you can while you still feel that stretch through the, through the glute. But the end game is to eventually bring it in to the pit of your elbow. So we'll hug it in and rock it like a baby. I just burped and I wonder if the microphone picked it up. I guess we'll see when I watch this back. All right, you can release that left foot. Bring your right foot in to the outside of your left knee, and we're gonna twist again. So, elbow to knee, and you can put your right hand behind you, and just twist back a little bit. Exhale, and you can twist a little bit more. Come back to center, and we'll switch sides. Left foot to the outside of right knee, right elbow to left knee, more hair. Left hand behind you and twist. Look over your left shoulder. <sighs> Exhale. Or yawn. If it's six o'clock in the morning where you are. And bring it back. So we're gonna bring our feet back in to the cobbler pose. All right, so keeping a nice straight back, shoulders back, deep breath in, exhale, and we're gonna stretch our hands out over front of our feet. Shoulders laced together, nice and tight straight back deep breath in slow breath out and some people can just lay all the way over but I'm still just not quite that flexible and I'm okay with it so we'll take another deep breath here Slow exhale. All right, walk your hands back in. And now put your hands behind you and you're gonna walk yourself back. Hold on, I gotta take my mic back off. Cause we're gonna end up in a reclined position. Feet still together, soles of the feet still together. Shoulders tucked underneath. And then you can press on the inside of your thighs if you need to create more stretch. Otherwise, just relax. Focus on relaxing your lower back into the mat. Continue to breathe. And if it helps you, you can take your, put one hand on your belly, one hand on your chest. And if you wanna stay here a little while, you can just keep your hands there, focus on your breathing. And this is a great meditation. to breathe 
in through the nose, out through the mouth. And you can stay here, or you can go ahead and stretch your legs out straight for Savasana. And you can keep your hands here and focus on your breathing, or you can bring them out side to side, I mean on either side of your hips, or up here, or out here, or up here. Whatever is most comfortable for you, any position you don't have to think about. There's not like, oh man, it pinches. Or, Just a nice and easy neutral position. And you can spend as much time here as you want. For the sake of the length of this video, we'll probably wrap it up though. Oh, roll your feet around, roll your ankles around, wiggle your toes. You can bring your feet to the mat, bend the knees. And grab on your knees, hug them in. Hug, hug, hug. Rock. And then slowly push yourself back up into a seated position. And again, here. You can stay put for a while. Focus on your breathing. Or you can get up, get dressed, go to work, which is what I plan on doing. So, all right, that's it, you did it. Great job. Your arms will probably burn a little. Yeah, they'll probably get a little tired, but that is how we build strength, and that's what we're here to do. We wanna build emotional strength, mental strength, and physical strength. So I hope you enjoyed it, and be well. Namaste.